Before we start, please take into account that Arkenforge is a very robust piece of software. The way I use it is in no circumstances the only way to do it. It is far more flexible and allows various techniques to achieve the same goal. Also, in these short clips, I focus on the map-making part of Arkenforge, but it is far more advanced with its own soundscape and encyclopedia models, and many many more. I encourage you to experiment with the software yourself as much as you can. Hey, Timur Sol here. In this video, we will talk about interacting with multiple uh, objects or multiple assets that you have on your map. In the last video, we've built a little uh, kind of a forest. It's a little small for a forest, to be honest, but so let's just copy it and maybe paste it over here. We'll rotate it the original a little bit so it doesn't look exactly the same. Let's say this is a little grove. Now you might have noticed that the bushes are either very large or the trees are very small. It's hard to um, expect that the software uh, will exactly know what you're planning to, planning to do or what you want to do. So uh, sometimes you will need to fiddle with assets by hand. Now what I did before a second is I selected multiple assets and I got a few assets that I don't want selected so I go into this panel over here you can always collapse it or expand it and I see what exact assets I have selected what I don't want is I don't want the cliff edge 2 to be selected and the cliff 8 edge 8 now I have only deciduous trees so if I want to make them bigger I simply need to drag this or this uh, corner to the outside to make them uh, make them lar larger in size. Um, if I would want to make them uh, only bigger or smaller in the X or Y scale, I could do it pushing or pulling these lines over here. Or if I grab the corner, I could hold my Shift key and just manipulate them like that. Now I don't want to do that. I want them simply to be bigger. Um, this roughly should do. Now, you probably want them more separated like this. Um, this should should do. Um, additionally, what I usually do is I lock objects. As mentioned in some earlier videos, locking objects is something that um, makes it easier for you to work with objects or in terrain layer assets and so on and so on. If I hold my alt over here, I see that two of the assets are already locked. Those are indicated with a uh, red uh, with red icon over here. If I click the icon, the object will become unlocked. Now, if I would like to lock multiple objects, I can do it in a couple of different ways. I could do it like this, just selecting those objects and toggling locked over here. There's a small button. I could also, if I'm satisfied with the map uh, and I know that I want to lock the objects layer, for example, I could also go into the toggle locked objects overlay and lock all objects. Now you see that by doing this, I have all the objects already locked. Now there's a slight difference between locking object layer and locking objects. This, for example, the foliage ground, it was built on the tile or it was built in the terrain layer and pushed into the object layer via the layering tools, right? I build it as a, as a brush tool on the tile layer and I pushed it to the object layer. As such, it is not actually an object, but it is on the object layer. So if I lock all on the object layer and click my Alt, I see that it's locked. If I unlock all on the object layer, I see that it's not locked. If I lock all my objects, it's not locked because it is not an object. And that is the difference between objects and uh, things that are on the object layer by chance. And also this is the way in which you can lock or unlock different, uh, different assets on your map and um, just make your life a little bit easier. 